This is Akash Vani. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on goods and services tax, a revolution in indirect tax system. The participants are A.K. Bhattacharya, economic analyst, and Ishan Mittal, anchor. On the occasion of the sixth anniversary of GST rollout in the country, the finance minister called the indirect tax system as the embroidery that stitches the fabric of economic progress. Today we have with us our guest, Mr. A.K. Bhattacharya, an economy watcher. So, we'll ask our first question now. The GST sure. has had a positive impact on consumers cutting across their tax burden. Could you also talk about how GST is a tech-enabled and tech-driven system and how does technology constitute an important part of the GST structure? The goods and services tax uh, was introduced uh, July 1, 2017, that is six, almost six years ago. There were three clear advantages that the new tax system was supposed to introduce into India's indirect tax structure. Customs duty was kept outside the purview. What it covered was 17 different types of taxes, including excise duty, countervailing duty on taxes and service taxes. So the first big goal that the GST was seeking to achieve was to eliminate multiplicity of taxes and bring them under one umbrella. That was number one. And number two was to ensure that the incidence of taxation over taxes, that is eliminated. What uh, in economic terms is called the cascading tax effect, which means if you are buying a, a piece of wood to make a table, you are paying a tax on the wood. And again, you are paying a tax on the table. Now, there is an element of tax on the tax that you paid on the wood. So GST ensures that the cascading effect of taxation is completely eliminated. So what happens is that there is an input tax refund that takes place. So the intermediate manufacturers, intermediate suppliers who have already paid the tax are not made to bear the burden of that as long as the final tax is carrying that burden. So the second big achievement and the goal of GST was to eliminate cascading effect of taxation. And then number three was to ensure that the fiscal federalism principle is brought into play where the center and the states sit together in a, under a body called the Goods and Services Tax Council to decide on how to, to levy taxes on indirect taxes, various things of excise, state value-added taxes, customs countervailing duties, and service tax rates, and many other taxes were even abolished, like octroi was abolished. So essentially, you had a situation where the central government as well as the state governments lost their independent power of taxing goods and services at a rate that they thought was necessary for them. Instead, the states and the center got together under an apex body called the GST Council and decided mostly by consensus or by votes what should be the rate at which the taxes will be levied. Now, it was introduced, as I said, in July 1, 2017. We have seen in the last six years, the initial days, there were a lot of glitches. There were problem of rates also. And then the COVID struck the Indian economy for about two, two and a half years. The collections uh, went down south. And now we see in the last two, three years, both with the use of technology as well as the rationalization of a part of the GST structure, we were seeing a steady growth in the GST collections rate. So the latest number for June shows a growth rate of 12%. The average that you have seen in the first quarter of the current financial year is around a monthly collection of 1.6 lakh crore, which used to be around 1.5 lakh crore in last year. So what we have seen in the last six years, stabilization of a new tax system, which is clearly more modern, more technology friendly, more consumer friendly. And because it is technologically enabled, the compliance is also relatively easy. Of course, we have a long way to go in making it even more easy and more simple. But I think in six years, we have made and covered a lot of distance. Thank you for that comprehensive view of the GST development over the past six years, sir. I wanted to ask you that GST collections have grown from initial numbers of 80 to 90,000 crores to as much as rupees 1.87 trillion in April. And it continues to remain above 1.6 trillion. So what has led to this gradual rise? 
even as you say that taxation in terms of uh, the number of raids have been reduced there is uh, less of a cascading taxation that happens how has this streamlining helped this kind of rise gradual rise in taxes it's an old maxim in taxation policies that when tax rates are rationalized tax rates are stable and tax rates are moderate then it gives a boost to economic activity and consumption we have seen is along with rationalization of the rates moderation in the rates and stabilization in the taxation system as far as gst is concerned what we have also seen is the use of technology very efficient use of technology to plug leakages to prevent evasion and avoidance and therefore your compliance is definitely greater so all these four factors have actually contributed to the steady rise in the monthly rate of collection for example in 2017-18 when the first year the average monthly collection was 92 93 000 crore now in the following year mind you that was 2018-19 was a pre covid year it went up marginally by to around 98 000 and then of course it went up at a very slow pace and actually it fell in 2020 2021 uh, because of covid but then from 21 22 we saw a steady increase from 1.23 lakh crore per month in 21 22 to 1.5 lakh crore average monthly collection in 22 23 and in 23 24 so far the average monthly collection has been 1.68 lakh crore so it is a steady rise economic activities have obviously been boosted and therefore the collections are also more but remember that this is not something that cannot be improved further because if you look at the way the efficiency of a taxation system is measured or the efficiency of a tax collection is measured we have to see what has been the rise of tax collections as percent of gdp now if you look at that gst collections Uh, in 2018-19 which was around 11.75 lakh crore uh, that was around 6.23% of gdp in that year in 2018-19 that was the pre covid year now what happened in 21-22 which is a post covid year the collections went up to 14.83 lakh crore but the a share in gdp was marginally up at 6.3% now that was not very good but in 22 23 which is the last year the collections have been around 18 lakh crore and the share in gdp has gone up to 6.6% now that's a good increase and let us hope in the current year this increase is is boosted further because it is important to measure the success of tax collections or a tax collection strategy not only by the absolute money that you collect but also to see how well you have collected as per as a percent of the rise in overall economic activity so i think we have a long way to go but the journey that we have made is a positive journey is an encouraging and promising journey and so far the results have been very encouraging taking forward your suggestion about and your assessment about the fact that gst always has scope for improvement could you talk about whether there's more scope for simplification as far as gst is concerned and for it to expand its base as far as uh, tax payers goods and services tax payers are concerned if you could shed some light on the possibilities that are there going forward for gst sure. see well, what has happened is that in the last 6 years but of tax payers and their gst there's no doubt it has gone up now in july 2017 when gst was introduced the number of registered 7 million tax payers that number in april 2023 has gone up to around almost doubled it is now almost 13.6 million so nobody can say or question the fact that the coverage of gst has stayed static it has doubled in the last 6 years it's a good increase it could have been more please remember that this increase the doubling of the tax payers base has happened despite i think it is 1.5 crore any transaction turnover of less than 1.5 crore are excluded from gst payment uh, but the beauty of gst as i was explaining to you earlier is that if you are part of gst you get lot of input tax refund on the final tax you pay because the taxes you may have paid at the intermediate stages of production 
So even if you are not obliged to be part of GST because of your turnover levels, you want to be there because if you are part of GST, then you take advantage of those input tax refunds, which is part and parcel of the GST thing. Now, having said that the taxpayer numbers have gone up, the GST council, which is the apex body, can look at is to reduce the multiplicity of rates. Even now, the number of rates are almost five to six. Now, these rates create uh, confusion, problems, and therefore, it is better to bring them down to basic three rates, or a middle rate and a merit rate and a demerit rate. Now, that way, it is simpler, it is easier to pay and easier to collect, and also the customers, the consumers, feel better because there is no arbitrage possibility there. And number three is petrol and diesel continue to be outside, outside the ambit of GST. Now, what happens is, as you would know, every service that you deliver and every goods that you produce and sell actually has an impact of the use of petrol and diesel. Now, you pay a hefty amount of tax on petrol and diesel, and which is that tax which is paid is not adjusted under the GST system because it is outside the GST system. Big amount, it will require a lot of effort on the part of the states and the center to agree to bringing petrol and diesel under the GST ambit. There may be initial shocks to the system. There may be a problem in terms of higher input tax refunds. There may be a problem even in collections. But if you want to bring petrol and diesel within the GST ambit, then the efficiencies in the economy will suddenly go up. Employ the sellers of goods and services will benefit. The buyers and goods and services will also benefit in form of lower taxes because remember, the moment petrol and diesel comes in, the cascading effect of taxes on petrol and diesel will also be eliminated. So that is the number second. And the third, in my view, is that the technology, technology usage has to increase further so that whatever little fake bills or leakages of duties to evasion, avoidance are eliminated. So these are the three broad steps that uh, can be, should be considered by the GST Council. There are multiple items on which there is yet to be some consensus in terms of taxation. Some of those are online gaming, horse racing and gambling also under GST, which would come up during the upcoming council meeting. So could you talk about what are the nitty-gritties that go into this kind of tax slab fixation and uh, how complex is the process, you know, for our listeners, how complex is the process of this kind of simplification that happens or rationalization? It's a very complex process. It's not an easy task. Remember that before 2017, different states and the center would decide on their own individually what should be the level of excise duty or the state VAT or countervailing duty on customs and service tax would be. Now, what has happened now is uh, it is the GST council which decides mostly by consensus what should be the rate of duty GST tax on, for example, online gaming, which you mentioned or any other new item that they want to, their duties to be changed. So it happens that there are 30 states, and then you have the center, there's a voting pattern, there are voting rights. So it is GST Council normally meets once a month, but of late they have not been meeting very regularly. The next meeting is due, if I remember, it is on 11th of July. Now these issues will come up at the GST Council and be decided through consultation now, as you know, that is a federal country and there are 30 states They are not ruled by the same political party. So there is a lot of debate and discussion. So it is not an easy process, but this is probably a better process because you have converted 30 different markets in the country into one single market. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on goods and services tax, a revolution in indirect tax system. The participants were A.K. Bhattacharya, economic analyst, and Ishan Mittal, anchor. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashwani. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsttalks at gmail.com or WhatsApp on 9289094044.